effort, you know. Got it. You get more sleep if you stop fun. I know, dude. That thing every time you make the final table stop at two thirty a.m. Oh, and then so I go to tired. bed at. I just Three. win all the time and can't sleep because I'm just counting my money all night. <laughs> pumped up from the adrenaline. Oh God, nah, it's hard nah not that. Guys. It's hard being successful. Now. <laughs> uh, guys, let's get to work. Let's get better. Let's crush. And this week we're going to continue the theme of what we were working on last. Last week we spent the entire session focusing on small blind, uh, small blind versus three bet small blind raising uh, first in and how what our range looks like and the construction of that. This week, we are going to move right over to the big line. We're going to go chip EV, obviously, versus limp and versus raise. And then we're going to get to just in the money. I'm not going to get to final table stuff. Um, we'll segment that for its own uh, its own thing. But I think we're going to work specifically here on blind versus blind, big blind, and then we're going to go in the money, 10% feel, money bubble, stuff like that to see how you guys would play. We'll drill it. Um, we'll test, but we'll quickly maybe look through a few of these. I know these aren't fun to look at, but we'll spend like quick little six minutes seeing all the ranges like this. We also have it in a GTO wizard where we can look at ranges that way as well and drill. Last week, we used a GTO wizard to drill the blind versus blind spots, correct? Or did we use I this? Who would who think we used, G we, G we used wizard this. last week? Go ahead, Joey. We, yeah. we used what last week? We used wizard last week. We used the wizard last week. I think we stay consistent. The ranges are pretty consistent as well. I was just uh training with this myself uh the past few days looking at it like this. Um, but yeah, we'll do it that way. One big takeaway and thing you guys should consider is this is a reasonable spot to exploit. Uh, you're going to have free reign to almost raise people 100% when they complete, uh, if they're tight enough or if they play poorly enough. Because right away, this range is pretty damn aggressive. And you could almost make a case and you can see the EV being neutral and for almost all these hands between raising uh, and completing maybe not so much of the suited eights and nines because you really just want to take those to the streets um, in position and not get lit raised and be in a weird spot. But a lot of this other stuff is just really good to just mix in. And we should be raising 44% of the time. And I don't think this is going to be people are doing this um, at all. Um, let's look at 30 super quick before we start training these spots. Oh, we're in a big blind versus lamp. Then we're going to go versus uh, raise as well. I'm definitely not meeting that pre-FR versus. Yeah, I mean, and one thing I've noticed playing against, let's say, resilience. I think they are extraordinarily tough in this specific spot. Like they, it, Russian Brazilians, uh, I feel like watching playing on ACR, playing against these guys, they are just know that this spot, uh, the no people don't know that well, and they raise versus limp or raise from the small blind, a very high frequency. Well, what I what I see often a lot is a small blind who raises linearly from the top. Oh yeah. So when they limp, they never have any good hands to defend their limping range with. Correct. And I and think people's strategy, and you can get away with murder. That yeah, I, I tend to instant raise all of those people if they limp. Yeah, because you can look at the small blind, uh, small blind first. Then we've looked at this. Um, yeah, you can see like even with this range, a lot of its stronger hands are raising. The problem is no one is balancing these hands, probably these hands either. So this limping range is entirely too strong. They're not even like these hands are just full frequency limping these. And then they might start raising like ace eight off pu plus pure. And then maybe some offsuit jacks, suited tens, and then a lot of the suited aces and stuff. And then everything else becomes like a limp for these kind of uh, more recreational players. 
Yes. And if you feel like that's the strategy, you should be raising like 60% or something. You know, I raised 110%. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can, I mean, some people just aren't comfortable raising some, but you could almost raise everything, right? Well, um, yeah, sorry. I mean, I do have limits. I won't raise the worst offsuit stuff. Well, look at this. Actually, you you're supposed to raise the. Oh, no, it's a really <laughs> small blind man. Big Watch blind. this. Uh, but big the big blind. blind in the lamp, you're supposed to raise the switch stuff. Uh, you're supposed to. And this is where, you know, uh, I think people get uncomfortable and don't know that you're supposed to just fucking pump it up with six deuce off, seven deuce off at some frequency. If you actually think the guy's playing just a linear strategy from the small blind, right? Fucking pumping it up here with this stuff. And just like exploiting. Give it a shot and see how you do. And, and then see that everything. And then, then, and then just see betting. And then A, you're going to get the note they're going to overfold pre flop. And then they're going to overfold on the flop. And then you're still going to have opportunities where the run out allows you to barrel, double barrel bluff on a lot of good run outs. So there's a lot of positives that can happen. And then these hands are so bad that they're not going to really improve or pick up equity or play super well, even in position post-flop. What are you going to do with eight deuce? Flop a single pair and pray to and hold on for dear life? You know? So, uh, let's look at 25. Then we're going to drill these spots as well. Uh, hero, small blind. Uh, hero, big blind versus limp. Less of the stu suited stuff. And more of the offsuit stuff. Like, look how much 9, 4, 8, 4, 10, 4 raises here. These kind of hands. I don't think people are hitting this. Jack, deuce off. Like, yeah. 20. Super quick. Uh, BB versus limp. Nothing. It, the, the dog shit region still there. And this is versus a, theor a theoretically sound player, right? Somebody who's playing well with some strong hands. And they they even have this kind of stuff, which never happens in one billion years, right? Like, they even have ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack completing uh, some of these strong playability hands, whereas your opponents probably aren't this balanced. Now, unstudied opponents never limp. So if they don't limp these kind of hands and then you are in this region, like, you probably want to raise more if, if they're playing a linear strategy. Now, you get deep in tournaments. I think people are completing in a small line when you've been aggressive and you've had some history. They are going to start limping and trapping with some stronger hands deeper. I see it all the time, especially versus me. Yeah. Especially you, versus you get, me. You get the tricky... Unsteady players don't limp aces to you. Yeah, I mean, somebody last night on a final table bubble of that 55-40K is completed pocket jacks, you know, in a small blind for like 20 bags, 18 bags or something like that, you know? Um, so, yeah, there will well, be I guess adjustments. Like, go ahead. So, I'm sorry. Uh, on the small, uh, uh, limps, you get to be more aggressive uh, in the big blind? Uh, yeah, and most uh, of the, this here is 33% at 20. At 40, big blinds, we're raising 40% of the time when they when they limp. With some of your worse, uh, slow-suited connectors, your strong linear, and then the dog shit, off-suit, four, five gappers and shit, stuff like that, the bad hands you're mixing with a lot. These are just jamming at 20, which is a very sound printing strategy. Ray's calling ace 10 off ace 10 off plus a seven suited plus sevens plus. I probably jam sevens way too much, but uh cool. And then we're gonna get into training the spot and studying it. Select filters. I'm sorry, big boy versus limp. Ramming it in with ace deuce off to ace 10. Small pocket pairs. And yet this, like, 10, 4, 9, 4, 8, 4, 9, 5, Jack Deuce. Like, this box 
has been mixing raids at all stack depths in chip EV. Seven Deuce is no longer really mixing. These really, really bad ones aren't, but the 10-4 hasn't came out. The 9-4 hasn't came out. Like, these kind of hands have not. So take that into consideration for your own strategy. Ripping off suit bases. So uh, let's go ahead and set it up and train now that we've seen it. And then we'll come back here, quickly glance at 10% uh, of the field, because I think that's honestly where I'm making all the money. I just don't, when I get in the money, I just go deep as fuck a lot. And you'll notice how many people punt when you start working on your ranges. Oh. Let me see if I could set this up while we're doing cash. I was also playing around with Ruse a little bit more. It's fun. It's really good. Uh, that's good. And then uh, I have to set up the thing, don't I? Do they just have BBB? Small blind, big blind. Hero. Come on. All right, cool. And then not ICM, chip EV. That. That. Pre flop only. All right, cool. Uh, no, we can't do custom. It has to just be like this, right? There we go. That was just the starting spot. Yeah, I just want to make sure it cuts off. Oh, once I get in there, I have to have it on single action because we're only studying the, the pre-flop. We're going to get to post-flop, but I feel like it's very good for us to work on one thing to get really strong on it, little bite-sized pieces of the game. So we're not trying to take well, too much. Well, pre-flop action, is it versus limp instead of any? Because any seems Yeah, because like we want just... Very you good call. Ball. And that's what I wanted to see. Thank you. That looks good. That's good. And then street. Cool. Let's see if it works. Uh Molten. Yeah. Come on, up? Cletus. Come on, Cletus. Get in. Uh, I'll raise 3.5. 3.5 at 35 big blinds here. Uh um, I was going to ask you the structure of the range. Um, but yeah, are you raising I, suited seven, suited eight, suited nines? Not suited nines. Not, um, not no, none of those actually. Okay. Uh, except like, the, not except aces, of course. Like ace names, ace names, ace seven, amazing. Okay. Yep. okay. But not the other suited sevens. Uh, are you going to raise offsuit twos, threes, and fours? Um, like nine deuce, nine three, nine four. Yeah, not not the five three five four region, not the connected, but like when it's um disconnected. Yes. Look at you, not five three, not five four, not really this, not the offsuit one gappers, but. Making sure we're always checking our range. Uh, even in here in GTO Wizard, 10-4 is just going harder in the paint. 9-5, all this stuff. And, yep, not A7 this time in this one, but A7 there. I think the EV of raising, it, it would just be fine in my book if you wanted to mix with this A7, right? Yeah, check or raise is like EV is just fairly comparable. Um, no really suited eights, no suited sevens, no suited sixes. You're staying away from this region um, and really polar with this region. Bad and strong linear as well. Makes it really hard to play. Yeah, see flops as suits do. Yep, you really want to see those flops and you don't want to get limp raised with that stuff. If you get limp raised with the dog shit nine deuce, nine three, who cares, right? Yep. But then you have the good stuff to balance that on top of it. So it's cool. Nice. I didn't see what he had, but it doesn't matter. Uh, 16, would you use uh, this 
90 are how are you constructing your suited connectors uh in this region molten okay so um i'm facing the junkiest ones like seven two seven three seven four oh, um okay. i'm jamming the like a lot of the low aces like ace two two ace five suited no okay. range, i like jamming uh this hand i like checking um what are you doing with 10-4 suited? Are you raising any of... Oh, yeah, you already said you're in there with the 7-do suited and stuff like that. Are you still yeah. doing... What about King-8, King-9 off? Uh, King-8, King-9 off. My instinct is a check. Um, Maybe... The tough one. Yeah, my instinct is a check, King-8, <laughs> King-9 off. But I'm actually not sure. Because I know that there might be some jamming with like some of those... But I think that might be too thin. Matt Nickel, what are you doing with those, buddy? Boy. How are you? What do you? How are you constructing your offsuit kings versus this limp? I am shoving the ones you said, king eight, king nine. And uh, so you're gonna have like king eight off plus. Or are you jamming even uh lower uh offsuit kings than that as well? Um, I think lower ones as well. It normally, I think the solver wants us to shove like the shittiest ones, like king three, king four, maybe king two. King two might just raise fold. Okay. Since it's the bottom. And then we're going to use a lot of our offsuit aces and a lot of our offsuit kings versus this, he's, he's saying. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And then Molten's unsure. Uh, I'm, Aaron. Showing, I'm showing the king next up. I'm You're showing the king next up as well. I'm jumping to ASEX for sure. King X, oh, yeah. I'm King eight, King nine off. I, I think I I honestly think I'm checking King eight, King nine off, but that might uh, be a blank blunder. Yeah, I think we're gonna mix a lot of our offsuit kings with just raise, um, and then maybe jamming some. But I think a lot of just raising uh, those jamming offsuit aces, jamming. Uh, I wonder if we're gonna jam some of our. Like, I'm thinking about hands like Jack-9, Jack-10, and stuff like that. 8-9 suited, stuff like that. I wonder. 8-9 suited probably just checks. This probably just checks as well. Um, Let's I, take a look. I think from this thing, this nah, we don't want to 10-9 suited. And all suited aces. Yeah, see, this is too much jamming, guys. Like, but there you go. You 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 got that, though, Matt. Like, uh, King-Deuce, King-3. But a lot of these are too much. I, I'm thinking, like, yeah, I just want to mix raise with these. For some reason, I felt like we might be mixing in some of this, some of these as well, but maybe that's just in chip EV where it gets a little nasty in some of these spots. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look what's in there. 10, 4, 9, 4, 9, 5. This region is undefeated thus far. This is slightly different than the Poker Academy chart, but... Yeah. This is like, yeah, no, here it is. This is the same thing. Like the queen two, jack two. Oh, queen two has touch. Yep, it's in there, Jamie. I mean, but it has a little bit more in there. But yeah, it's it's, it's practically really the same. Ace five off had more jamming. <clears throat> We're 17 though, so. Yeah, 17 in this. It's a little bit deeper than the 15 here, to be fair. Um, Cool. We're going to drill these. We're going to We're going to get better at this spot. <laughs> it's gonna happen. I agree with it a little bit. Where is an off to offsuit two gapper in there as a raise? Or did you want something more junky like eight five, eight four? How did yeah, eight, I want something more? I think sixes is I think this one is like the borderline of check. I think it's just good enough to check. We don't have to raise this one. Burn like check, don't have to raise this one. It might maybe raise like 20%. We're seeing this uh, range a lot in this stacked up a lot, which is good for us, you know? We're getting better at this stacked up. Uh, and knowing we don't use a lot of our suited hands, we're mixing uh, a lot of our offsuit hands. If this is a straightforward opponent or one of the opponents oh. we assume who are raising only strong linear, is that going to uh, I'm raising that. Raise I'm raising, raising this pure it. if it's I'm demanding this pure if it's straightforward. I'm actually raising this pure if it's against most um against most players actually. Only the top is regs I might actually mix and check. Because yeah, most I mean, players are just too straightforward. 
like this is great it, even like even versus the best player of all time you can raise it half half the time the solver right you really want to be a little careful it. though right like this hand you can mix raise cool no problem but you also kind of want to see a flop with an eight six and rather do this with like eight four eight deuce right and raise those hands this one when you raise and get limp raise it's kind of like man it's, it's half shitty but it's, but it's, it's also not because it's half world. shitty <laughs> yeah, this I mean, you're like, I'm gonna feel a little bit worse about this than nine six and ten six, right? So, but yeah, 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 exactly. I'm trying to unleash the beast in these guys because I know these cats are checking a hundred percent. Some of them, yeah, like some people are acting like, yeah, I'm gonna raise. Most people are fucking just checking this uh, autopilot. This is why we're besties, though, right? Like we're fucking yin and yang. We're like exactly the same in a bunch of ways, and then yin and yang in poker sometimes where. When it mixes, I generally lean the passive way, and when because I want to play post, and when you when, it when mixes, I see this, my you eyes generally are like, play aggressive because oh. <laughs> you take the aggressive line more often. So yeah, both. But I mean, I also am like trying to get better at deferring to uh, thinking logically what's best versus the opponent, and I'm always gonna go through the whole tree and tell myself, <laughs> well, this might mix, but this specific opponent at this time with this oh, stack sure, up with yeah, this yeah, game flow. Yeah. And I think those are the conversations you guys have to have a lot. I you mean, I have that a lot in this group, and I think it is really important to to if you're gonna vary, you know, you get a mixing spot to mix based on opponent type this is a great way to mix if you're gonna randomize, right? I, I guess. Is that's not really even randomizing, right? It's I not even you, it, you target your you target your your but look, strategy based to your opponent, right? It's really hard to coach that, but I do agree. Like that is where the that's the difference in crushing all the time. And look, like, when, you guys are talking about a feeling about a hand because you want to see it. I'm not even thinking about. I see that I can mix rays, and I'm going to take full advantage. The exploit is most people cannot handle pressure and they're going to be out of position and i'm going to be like have an aggressive image already they probably won't want to play the hand and if i do get raised they probably trap me and i don't give a shit or i'm going to get them next time right we are trying to like be the table captain that's why I, that's the way i see the game like i want to see i don't i want to make him fold and make him uncomfortable over and over and over again until they make a mistake Right, this is war in these spots. So now that I get to, we get to see that we can go kind of crazy here versus people. You're going to get people making massive mistakes. You're going to raise the nine five off, ten five off, nine four off three times in a row, and then the fourth time you're going to have ace queen, and they're going to jam. You're going to snap them. Race. All right, Molten. Uh, two more. Back. Uh, queen nine, yeah. Sorry. It's the suited nine net region. That suited nine region. Uh, check. We are at forty bigs here. A little bit deeper. Yeah, that's true. Do you think I, it's I just, too thin? I just think it's a little too thin for value. How about uh, exploitatively? Are you? Or would you mix? Are you going to check hands like this even exploitatively? Uh this deep it depends on going uh um <laughs> yeah i mean there's spots why we're versus this there's opponents why we're about this uh because just because of how straightforward small blind is but if small blind ever has like any limp three bit uh bluffs i'm never i'm never racing this <laughs> i like that so like it all that. depends That's on fair. yeah i think it's important to ask those kind of questions have those discussions i i kind of like check here a lot uh with 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 these specific hands, this is something that would actually hurt my heart to get limp raised. <laughs> like, and uh, I think it plays so well post swap that we just want to play the game. Um, yeah, I, 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 I actually would never raise this versus. I think it's really good to just have in there. The suit at nines, uh, really good. Going harder in this region if they stink. This time at 40, ace five suited plus, a seven off, and uh three deuce off <laughs> all the all, a lot, all the offsuit deuces you can make three using. That's kind of cool. Except for ace deuce. Uh oh. Checks. Okay. Turn six races. Nine six races. 
I think this is I think this is bad enough for in race three. Race three, how often do you think the solver's doing it versus solver? Uh I think it races 40. 40%. Let's yeah, let's go 40 percent race. Raise this, Matt Nichols says. Raise three, three D. What do you think, Dub? You raising this? Um in game depends on opponent. I think Solver does it about a third of the time. Yeah. Like, I usually just try to visualize that square like eight deuce to eight five, jack deuce to jack five. Like yeah, I wonder, uh... that's that's the one I've got memorized right now. <laughs> yeah. One one little section at a time. Uh I wonder if like yeah. the offsuit sixes and sevens aren't doing it as much as the twos, threes, and fours, the worst. But I imagine this is probably still some frequency, maybe 30, 40% of the time. I wonder if we want to use this less than we would Jack 4, Jack 3, Jack Deuce, 10 4, 9 5, all that stuff. Um, maybe offsuit sevens and eights do it less than the rest, but this one's probably mixing enough because it's just bad enough. Uh, but still mixing. I think with the jacks. Uh, we, we need worse. I think with the jacks, the only ones that are pure check are the ones. I, that I said 10 6 and it's like, ah, that's, that's understandable. I mean, to be fair, like, yeah, sure, we didn't get this one, right? But if you look at the EV, if you were to do this in game, and, and I think this is important for you guys to understand, right? And see this like rationally yeah it's it's a it's just a dog shit hand in this region and the ev of it is is the same between is, is you checking so if you really have a read on a guy or that you think the situation is good or the spot's good to raise you could still just mix it in here with these kind of hands obviously it wants to do it less for blocker reasons for playability reasons because you're going to have many worse hands you want to do it with and some better but if you did happen to raise here as an exploit it's not horrible Oh, and as I said, when you have a when you have jacks, um, the only ones that want to call check pure are the ones that are connected to that can make a straight. Jack eight to jack ten. Yeah, jack, yeah, you don't want to raise get raise off those. I think my dumbass would use to jam this at like fifteen. Weirdly, jack seven raises more than jack six, which I'm a little shocked because jack seven can also make a straight. Eight, although it's rare. Yeah. Uh, was that five? I think. Nope. Um, now five. Oh, is this it? Are you in there? Um, no. It's it's all good. No, that was yeah. five. You complete. yeah, that was five. All right. It's all good, Molten. Thank you, brother. That was good. Thank you. No, thank you, man. That was solid, solid work. Good work, fam. Uh, Aaron. Oh, crap. Okay. Uh, Aha, this raise is, of course, easy. Easy. Raising this. This is portrait. What's the... Uh, how does our strong linear range construct it, starting with suited aces? What's the worst suited aces you're to raising here? Uh, we'll go for just ace five. I think we can get away with that because we're not getting jammed on very often. What's the suited worst... Broadway oh. is... Suited Broadway uh, starting at suited tens, pure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we say in the jacks. suited nines, off suit. We are off suit tens. I mean, in real life, nine. it's like everything yeah. off suit, but we see that little, you know, dash <laughs> there through the off suit range. But I would seriously raise all the off suits. Just in, okay. Yeah, that's just, just like anything of off suit. He's just raising, and that's just the. Strong, so it's all strong broadways. Only thing you're not raising is suited, suited nine, suited eight, your suited region. Yeah, that's it. We play posts sometimes, so he doesn't think I raise everything. <laughs> if all I right. remember, somewhere this in this sense. area in the chart, there's a hand that checks a lot in the suited broadways. That's Jack true. 10 suited. I mean, uh, not Jack Ten, uh, Queen Jack suited. I mean, I would, I would probably be raising this every time as well. And then my man said he's raising every single offsuit hand a hundred percent. But look at the suited region we get to raise here as well. I think I'm missing this. There. I'm definitely missing it, but I make up for it in the offsuit region. So. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Yeah, this five threes in there a lot. Yeah, I kind of miss these, man, at 40. So I imagine if we go deeper, we're going to be able to mix in more uh, suited stuff. And this is 42% here. It was 44% at 40 big blinds in uh, Prefop Academy. I think this is good. We'll do five more hands, and then we're going to do uh, – we'll let Aaron finish out his set, and then we're going to go into versus raise at the same stack depths for 10 hands, and then we're going to do ICM. Uh, cool. uh, so go back here. I'm with you. Oh, piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, oh, crap, eh? Do we get to fold kick. against the solver? <laughs> I'm a fish from calling. <laughs> He's done. Uh, uh said halves, are you calling? No, I think I would find the fold, but let's click call because oh, I'm no said halves today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Said halves, you calling? On the on the three bet spot, no, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> so, what's the worst hand? Are you calling king ten suited? King ten suited, maybe a king jack suited. It, okay, I think it's the it's the top of the folding ring, <laughs> the queen. <jack. laughs> oh my god! Uh, let me see. Who am I interested? BP, you out there? What are you doing here? Oh yeah, BP. What am I doing? BP is just BP is folding. Uh, what's the word? Are you calling King Ten King Jack su uh, suited here, BP? Or what's the worst suited Broadway nine ace that you would call with, if any? Are you calling King Queen suited here? And Larry, how about yourself, buddy? These are interesting spots because it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> I don't think this is quite good enough. I think we fold. King ten suited. King uh, king ten suited. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a fold. King jack suited. King jack suited. That's getting really close. King queen suited oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, king queen. You know, king queen suited in there. Ain't no way. Uh, I fold. think king jack suited. I think uh I think we call. I'll be honest with you, I think this is a call. <laughs> I wonder if this is just printing a little bit and a call. When I envisioned this range, I felt like he's limp jamming enough smaller pairs and hands were 60-40 with and uh lower suited aces as well. And we saw the small blinds range here, which is raising pretty strong linear. And then some of its limp jams come from like weak suited aces, twos, threes, fours, fives. Um, maybe there's some, maybe there's some weak suited aces. I, I think it's close. I, I mean, maybe yeah, I game on Triple B. Are you calling so, this the same way in an actual game? Yeah, I think this and Queen, King Jack suited are so borderline. I think they could go either way. You were phone here, Aaron. No, Aaron, what were you oh. doing here? Oh, Who's in that? real game, the guy would have to be really freaking sick of me and aggressive for me to call this off. Yeah, so you're, like you're never using that range in real before you. But they can do a whole crap load of offsuit aces that they're rejamming if they're really sick. It is king ten suited. Oh, Why is queen ten fault. suited? What the fuck? Queen ten suited calls the queen jack suited. Fault. Yeah, I think it's, it's ace drag, right? ace queen ace jack. Because I knew we were calling. Look at... Wow. I personally thought we were calling everything. It's zero EV. Oh, no, it's fucking dead. We all, all the way I, th I knew we were calling King 10 suited. So I imagine we were calling. If I, I envision we were calling suited 10s plus. So seeing this as a fold is kind of surprising to me. Because I knew this we were calling. This has got to be based on like something they do specifically with queens and jacks, right? Yep. I this think it's ace, queen, ace, jack. I think it's. I think it's because they limp ace queen. Ace well, this jack. is what this is the range I imagine, right? Oh, it's because ace queen. It that is what the fuck it is, because they limp ace queen ace jack molten. God, you're good. I forgot about this region. Yeah, I knew I this was in here, and I knew this was in here. Ace queen and ace jack, and then never limp jam. Some of this stuff, I guess, like the weaker ace jack. Never and then you have like I, I just mean, I, really I don't even know that they jam those small pairs in reality. I think they flat them a lot or yeah. threw at them to some other size. No, I think you get there. jammed on. I know you. I mean, I feel like you get snap jammed on by these smaller pairs. I do love to limp jam small pairs myself. Yes. So someone does. 
somebody people do it to me all the time like there's just no way that's why i was kind of comfortable calling it yeah. this is a bold oh, damn it. people do it but does a large amount of population do it to me yes so it's it's your own personal like i play on iggy so yes they do they're fucking spazzy as hell i would still fold as hell they're spazzy bro there's no I way most of most of the players in my games will limp call like those small pairs not me minor they're jamming on me i mean i'm playing 50s yeah you're you're playing higher play. levels than I really think it depends on what Matt, you're probably you not. extra spazzy on ignition for sure with the anonymous thing, but if you're playing on like global, I don't think that it matters. Not, I mean, by the unless way, the guy's crazy as fucking then you know. But uh, yeah, I think on global, it's it's a higher frequency fold. I think that's fair. Wherever you think the people are playing spazzy, I just think on Iggy, especially if I'm this is chip EV with 40 big so i'm assuming i can rebuy and get a reasonable stack and i'm just going to gamble here it sounds ridiculous to say out loud but it's happening is it yeah. fair to say that people are more spazzy on anonymous sites as opposed to ones that are tracked hell yeah brother yes sir it's a wild anomaly anomaly like people yep, i'm finally learning mind. it's crazy yep 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 yep, yep. raise fault the jam i mean honestly yeah. a great practice if you guys play a lot on ignition um, a great practice is to buy the, I believe it's Ace Poker Solutions that has it. Um, is the uh, I think it's called not the hand collector. It's a hand converter. So it's a second product, not the one for the eye, but this one. And what it does is it takes your hand histories once they're done, and converts them in some way where you can see everyone's full cards. And then you can go in your poker oh. tracker and try and range your opponents, and you see how close you are. You can. Yeah, that... You'll be surprised at what you see um, when they fold. Yeah. You can't do it that's in game, but once again, that's what we do for the Friday studies. Friday oh, geez, you look at their hands. Yeah, it's great. It's a good practice. It's, it's pretty wild. I actually don't think you need the uh, need the converter because I just did, you know they have the series where you no you don't even practice. need the converter. You just need to download the hand histories, guys. Yeah, just it's got to be like, like it's got to be like you two can days see later. their hands even when they fold. Yes, yes, you can. I just once you it. download the hand histories from the site, yeah, you get all the fucking hands. Yeah, yeah. I it ain't even new. It's for, always been like that. I think it's you have to wait for the next day, and you can download all the hands yep. and see everything. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um. Cool. Let's try to stay on track. Uh, because we got a good bit to get through, and I want I I need to spend some time looking at ICM today. Uh, BBB in the big blind. <laughs> so cool. Let's do four more hands here. Make sure we're nailing our range and the construction of it. And let's go. So Aaron, you said you're raising yeah. Raise this. What percentage of the time are you raising this? Or you think solver I mean, would raise this? I think the solver would raise this. I'm going to say 70%. 70%. I think the it might be closer to 40, but I think the offsuit broadways are fairly high frequency. 35% for Matt. So... Thinking we use this as one of the stronger hand, stronger hands we check back, since it's not really strong enough to raise and call a jam, but it does get limp called by a lot worse King X Jack X. Twenty five percent for skate. Um, Aaron's here, and it's a 50-50. And this is a reasonable region that we should can be we we should consider these offsuit tinge jacks. These kind of play reasonable trap posts. And we're not really happy about getting limp raised with this region, right? This shit, we don't care. This stuff good enough to play poker, right? So I want to see something here. I need to see if at 30 big blinds we're folding it. Like, wait a minute. No, we're in a bit. Oh, they raise. No, small blind call. We raised 3.5 with Queen Jack. They jam. Now it calls. Okay, I just had to stack that for them. Okay, I see, I see, I see. And that's because small blind no longer full frequency, slow plays, ace, queen, ace, jack. And in real life, they just won't. So, okay, okay. So, yep, these 50-50s, king, queen is even mixing... Uh, Check back, queen jack off, king 10 off, king jack off. Good hands to mix at 30 to 40 big blinds. Dead. 
I have a question. <laughs> yep. What kind of hands do you think your uh, your opponents are limp, limping or just like limp raising in the small blind here in this in this spot? My type of opponents? Yes, not the solver, but yes, like ignition, etc. Like, what should their range be at? Like the stakes we play, like low um low stakes, mixed stakes. This should be their range. A. They should be mixing, have a mixed strategy like this, where they have not only strong linear, but they're also mixing some of their ace x, king x, queen x type hands, um, and then some of these suited hands. We saw this last week with small blind play and how aggressive we need to be in this region, where people aren't raising 30% of hands here at all. Most people are raising like 18%, which is just really good stuff here. Right. Or and they have limp tra limp jams with this stuff. Nobody, I don't think they mix limp in with these hands enough. So. I guess so it's like, it's not live poker, so they're going to for sure have some, not all of it, but at least some of, of this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's hard to put a thumb on how people, inter like, it's one of the most misplayed ranges in the game, so... Trying to get like tell you how uh, a wreck is gonna construct their range, just assume it's strong linear without it without with not enough bluffs. If you get raised, and when they complete, assume it's weak as shit. That's it. Uh, Aaron, I think what this raise is only like five or ten percent in solver land because the gappers seem to not want to get jammed on and want to see a flop. But I would probably still just raise this. <laughs> Knowing he's might be making a mistake, but still exploiting the making fact a that mistake his against fits. solver against a human. I think it's. I don't think they're going to be jamming like crazy. Right, and if you get limp caught, it plays well enough and cool. I think this is a fifty-fifty in solver land. To be honest, I think the offsuit one gappers here are pretty high frequency checks. And then our raising is going to be driven up by slightly worse. Offsuit hands, obviously the 10 4, the 9 5, the jack deuce, the offsuit threes, and stuff like that. And then our strong linear and our offsuit aces. Whereas these may not go as crazy as the way I interpret the range. So let's see. Check 100%. Yep. No raising at all. And more of the junk here. So we're getting better at this already, right? You can practically play uh, a strategy instead of trying to find these. If you have a strategy where you check all the suited shit damn near and then mix raise with it in this and know that a lot of your suit off suit connectors like to just check, how easy is the game getting, right? We can start to see the tree. This is the kind of shit I'm talking about. You get in game, you know you raise your pairs, jam some of the small, and then just never raise your off suit connectors, never raise suited hands, and then just pound them with this shit. A7 off plus and everything else. Keep this range off suit tens as traps. Oh, I can't wait to play poker tonight. And open jam king queen off sometimes for 30 bigs. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it plays so well as a trap, man, and keeping worse king x, queen x, and stuff like that. I kind of like it as a. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not for jamming it in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just, just gets snapped off. I don't know. It feels like I make more posts, but you probably don't. Uh, cool. So we decided to raise, which was a no no. Uh oh, easy it's testy. easy, easy. He said easy now. With yeah, no, off. easy. It's got to be like 65 70% in the charts, and humans respond poorly. He's probably doing a strong linear range that he's raising. I think it gets we need slightly worse for it to be a higher frequency. This one probably can mix 30 or something like that, but I'm imagining uh six seven is not a raise at all. Seven five probably a little bit, seven four more, seven three more, right? And, and so on and so forth. So let's see. Uh I would say 20. 30. Oh, just keep checking it. Yep. Okay. So it does. When we get to nine seven, it gets more in this region. Look how easy the okay, game more is. More than bro. a two gapper, it likes. Yep. And then when we get to forty plus, we can use, start using uh, some suited connectors in there as well. Are we raise folding those suited connectors, or are we like 
What are we doing with those? I mean, if they jam, hell yeah. Yeah, you, obviously you can't call it off. Well, if, if, they, if they go 10, you, you're in position. You can never fall. Okay, so it's you pretty just easy. call it. Okay. But uh, when you go 3.5 and somebody actually goes 10 in game, A, it's giga nutted because people don't balance an actual small click size enough, which you're still going to be able to call. And B, people won't use the size 10. <laughs> They're just going to go bigger. You know, I, I don't think people are going to be uh, doing uh, using the appropriate sizings enough unless they have this the giga top of the range. Right. Yeah. It's just weird because like philosophically, it seems like the solver doesn't like raising anything that it want that, that it wants to play post and doesn't want to fold to a jam like suited connectors. But we won't get jammed as much as he also is just going to have raises that we can call to 10. His only play isn't going to be limp jam where he doesn't have another raise when we get shallower outside of jam, whereas 40 plus he does, which you get to play the suited connectors to. And the solver knows your range, so you have to yeah. have it protected. And I guess that's an interesting discussion. If you don't think people limp raise anything but all in, maybe using six, seven and some of those is just checks, right? And if and if you use that at forty and not raise it enough, at fifty plus maybe start raising it there, right? So it's it's interesting uh, philosophically, like you said, versus our opponents. I have another question for your, based on your experience, when the Sabra has like three different raising sizes, like three, six, ten. Simplify. You, you simplify to three. Yep. Three and a half. Mm -hmm. Just ignore the others. Yep. Personally, yeah, yep. I'm not going to make the game. The EV difference is nothing. I'm not splitting appropriately. Uh, nothing does the raise 10. Nothing does this practically ever. They almost shouldn't be there, but it's it's almost whatever. And my simplify range is always going to be this. And I just cheated and, and showed him this range. Oh, well, you know what you're doing with sixes. You're raising this, right? Yeah. Be crazy. I mean, not yeah. To. So what are you doing with twos, threes, and fours at 35? Do you think those jam ever at 35 plus, uh, 35, 40? Uh, I don't think they actually do in Solver Land, and I don't think it's even profitable against the limp anywhere anyway. <laughs> like. The jam, yeah. Uh, so we're raising this. Um, let me see. Pucks, are you raising every single pair here? Do you have any all-ins? Let's start there. Low pocket pairs all in. Hmm. Joey, do you think we jam at 35 with twos, threes, fours, fives? No, that starts at 30. Are you still raising all every single pair? No, I I'm not sure what the chart says, but I like Matt's answer. Check behind with like the smallest and raise like five is fives and above fives plus raise and checking the lowers no jams twos threes no no fours plus and this is good to see no punt all ends anymore for you anybody no punt jams at 35 and it starts at 30 but if he raises we get the punt right if oh, yeah. uh we raise Oh, if he oh, no, raises. small blind race. We just get to punch it off with deuce to fours, right? Yeah, we're going to look at that later. We're close enough to it. You would just shrug this shit in, wouldn't you, Aaron? You would oh, just yeah, say, easy. Oh. easy. <laughs> I love, love punting. <laughs> like, hey, let's go. I know I know it's in there and it's close enough where we're just doing it. Yeah, I mean, shit. I see a little bit of profit here. I know, you know, it says call, but I see all in printing something. <laughs> I'm like you in some of these spots. If I was playing enough tables or if it's in a small enough portion of my buy-in tree, I'm just jamming all these every time. I wouldn't even remember threes as a call and just jam them all. Uh, Ace, 10, plus. Okay, cool. I think this is the last one. And and Philly will punt in, on behalf of the new punter we have. What up? The Eagles got a new punter, so we have to punt to <laughs> on be, his behalf now. Uh oh, we have a dog shit one. Yeah, no, this is more than a two gapper. Has two cards below a ten. I'm sure sure this is going to be a high frequency raise because we don't care about letting it go anyway. All right, now we get to back to raising it up. Uh, this one's probably very high frequency, huh? 
No, it's still 60%, but uh, we're on track, though. After about 20 hands, an hour of discussion, looking at the range over and over at these stack depths. Although, this solver didn't really give us anything at 20. It kept giving us 35, 40, and 17. Never gave us 20. Never gave us 25. But um, I think we're in a wheelhouse of knowing how we construct our range there. Um, let me go back here. And I think we, um, I think we're good. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> so there, let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to, um, I wonder if we go to ICM and look at it there. What do you guys think? We we can look at ICM or we can look at versus race chip EB. Vote in the chat and I'll come back and I'll count up the votes between who's here. You can vote in chat. You can say ICM or uh, Chip EV. Uh, and then we're going to take a quick five minute break. Do that. I'm going to leave it here on the range so you guys can see this range as well. Let's, I'm going to put it here at uh, 25 because I don't think they gave us much 25. Call and then a big blind. So yeah, here's our 25 range as well. Um, I'll be back in five guys. Let, me let the dog out and stuff.
One second, guys. Let me do this real quick. Sorry, guys, I got a show for PC. All right, cool. Uh, let me see. Joey says chip EV, chip two chip EVs, and oh, I see him. Damn, you guys got ran over. All right, cool. I see him. Work it is. Matt Nickel comes in with a, de a desperation chip EV. I feel you, brother, but the boys want I see him. Uh, and I think. Let me see, final table only, 200 players. Okay. Um, I was just trying to see 20, I'm going to go 25% left in the end three and two tables. Um, It would be worth your time to look at 50 and 75% of the field left, this kind of stuff. But I feel like, for myself personally, I always spend a lot of time in this region and getting better there so we don't grief it. Um, we have a lot of different options. I wonder if I just go to the solutions library here. Do this and then do this and then do this and then do this and do this. Oh, I can train a few different spots. Yeah, we can just get a lot of work done. Hell yeah. Um, players, they... Yeah, but per personally, when we do like so many options, I we get confused. Less. I retain less of the information. I, I, I know. I just, I, I'm pretty good at retaining stuff, but I mean, that's not fair for everybody else. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we'll do 25. And I think uh, as we approach Money Bubbles, get deeper in tournaments see how we are uh strategically doing that it's good players any 25 percent left there bang bang uh pre-flop versus limp small blind big blind bang all right uh mr joey i want you to retain everything and i want you to get better oh, what are you doing here we didn't even look at any ranges, but... Um, Hell no, we didn't. But this is straight intuitive. What are you doing? And then seeing what you did wrong and getting better that way. Yeah, this is completely different than getting a, a pop quiz before. You're going to get yeah, in here. I think I would check this one in ICM. Check this one. So, overall... If, if he was... If he was... Had a larger stack... In Chip EV, I would raise this. Okay. I'm not sure with ICM and him having a lower stack. I don't know if I want to raise it. I ask you, how about your offsuit king? King deuce through king eight versus this. Are you are you ripping all your offsuit? I know the offsuit aces up to ace king, ace queen, whatever. You're going to be raising. I can imagine that. How about your offsuit kings? Um, the top kings, maybe the king 10. Yep. Skip a couple and then the, like king six and below. Hmm. Um, like the high low kings and queens, skipping the middle. Um, okay. Aces, uh, aces might do the small raise and then. So some of the small raises mixing will be like 10, 4, 9, 5 in that area of the chart. Okay. 
Molten, you think King X, all those ripping? I think Aaron's here. Aaron, I know what you're doing with King X. Not all That's ripping, a, but more, oh, yeah, yeah, more percentage raising. Ten time. big blind? Those are easy <laughs> rips. <laughs> uh, Seth Habs, you have competition now, my friend. Aaron's here. Aaron's old school aggro. He's been he's been around the streets for a minute. He's been aggro since you were a glimmer in your daddy's eye. All right. Uh let's check. I do think uh offsuit King X would go ham in this spot. Uh potentially almost all. I mean, I'm probably ripping almost all my offsuit aces. A lot of my suited suited aces. I'm just going really hard versus which, which group do you put Ace King in? The small race or the show? Small race. Three the the three, I'm threeing Ace King. And where do you start shoving Ace Queen or Ace Jack? You probably can mix Ace Queen between three and Jam Ace Jack. I'm just, I mean, it probably a lot. Like theoretically, it probably raises Ace Jack. O plus Ace Ten might even mix fifty fifty, and then jamming all the worst, and then suited Aces like Ace Ten plus probably wants to raise three to induce, and it's good enough. And then some of your suited tens probably good enough, but I feel like we're eating here. But let me see. Raise three, griefed it. So this is part that matches with the eight. And never, it never ends with the dog shit. No mix, just pure. This is gonna be fun to see. Okay, I would have griefed. I mean, I'm probably not, ripping every we're offsuit. Not ripping king. nearly as much as I thought we were. Uh huh. Look at this. I'm fucking griefing this spot as well. This is good to see. Yeah, so I said ace seven or ace eight plus raising, ace ten plus raising, mixing. So this does mix uh, a bigger one, practically jam. Damn, I'm jamming ace deuce through ace nine every time. <laughs> yeah. I'm jamming king deuce through king ten every time and then raising king jack sometimes. Ooh, this is how much EV am I? That ain't that bad to have. That's not a horrible strategy. Yeah, I, I said king six and below, I rip. Yeah, I mean, it's not a horrible strategy from an EV perspective to have, honestly. Like, if you're looking at the EV. And then call the but, middle ones. I would yeah, these are good king. enough where you want to raise and not jam. Yeah, I would have jammed, like, king, queen, king, jack, king, ten. Yeah. I, yeah, uh, queen, ten? I might even, like, some of this shit, man. Oh my God. King, nine? King, eight? Versus this limp? Look at all the suit aces just limping. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way I'm not jamming like ace three, ace four, and shit to this limp. Oh, it was like that in Jippy V as well. I don't think they jumped. I think I know. Jumped. I'm just bad. Oh yeah, my I god! I, mean, I said that as well. What? They have no limping range. All righty then. Oh, okay. We're trapped. Yeah, that's good. Is mostly ace king. Yeah, we're fucking trapped. No wonder. Okay. Okay, that's actually good to know. No <laughs> yeah. range. But I'm gonna tell you this now: people do have a limping range, and it stinks yeah. at the mid and small stakes. Hell yeah, they do. It's it stinks. People are limping here with eight six off, like nine ten off. Molten ashes. Is, I do. <laughs> oh no, race three pure. Jam done. Of course we get jammed on. Did you see the rain solver? <laughs> yeah, of course. It's just it's no conceded. shit. There was nothing bad. <laughs> there were no bad hands in that limping range. Why did we raise this? The solver is bad. Aces. Nuts. All right, now we got a real stack. Go ahead, Joey. Oh, 60. Um Somewhere in that part of the offsuits has raising on like the triangle. Okay. Um, I I think this might mix check and raise 3.5. The fact that we're this deep in the money, I wonder if our structure raises less, but I do know some of our junkier oh. 10 4 suited, uh, their suited connectors were in there. Um, some of the Lawrence, I think this one probably checks we're over there in no man's there. land, but I, I I could see raising this when we get deep and just putting somebody in hell. 
You said you were raising the show, eh? Yeah. Yep. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So these are still in here. This is good to see. And then over here in this ballpark, Joey nailed it. We always get to go crazy. And we're still close to 40% here. As we get shorter, we start calling more suited. But when we're deep, we can raise the bottom. Um, do any of you guys have uh, use a random number generator when you're playing? Pux, you do? Anyone else? No. Nope. No? No? I used I to up with a quarter. Not anymore. Uh, how many people are playing on ACR, Juro, Gen? Let me show. I mean, not Juro. An ACR, uh, Bet Online, uh, GG, Stars, all the like. I don't love this tool, but one thing it does have, and I think it's important for these kind of spots. If you think you're going to struggle on uh, trusting your own decisions, or you actually want to randomize, which can be good and hard to play against. Jurogen, right? This tool I've used for a long time, and I think it's great. It has a little RNG meter it keeps on your table. You could take every fucking thing else off if you don't want to use it, but it does have an R RNG meter on it, guys. And this is one area that I think it is very reasonable and easy to use and utilize when you get to this limp spot. If you actually want to be balanced and you want to, and you know that you should be mixing, but you don't you don't have a good game flow sense. You don't know opponent. So it's like, I'm actually going to randomize this time. And this is a good tool to do that. I, I like to randomize exploitably. I get it. I think I do too as well. I don't always use this, but sometimes I do. I actually have a different method too. I mean, there's a, there's a million different. There's hands on the clock. There's different times you I can use. use I there's use quarters. The suit to the cards. Suit to the cards as well. Yeah. Um, But yeah, also this has bet buttons as well. Say I pick hearts that day, and if I'm randomizing 25%, if I get hearts, I... If the first top card yep. is a heart, I randomize. Yep. Here's some of the sites. I'm not even, like, trying to show this thing. I just want you guys to have good tools. And I think it's important to be able to have the option if you like, if you like the idea of randomizing some of these situations you struggle i think it's good uh cool. uh we go back to practice raise daisy we're already getting better at this spot and understanding the range don't worry we're going to do post flop work uh coming up in this spot as well solver's running hot jack deuce versus the limp deep in an M mtt this mixes raise and check. Um, what is aggressive Joey going to do? Who, me? I'm going what is aggressive Joey going to do? I'm raising it. Beautiful. I, thought, I actually thought it was closer to 50 50. I didn't know. Nope. Even if nowadays you think it's 50 50 and you're playing the small stakes and the micro stakes, you're the boss. Oh, yeah. I don't. They don't run you over. You run them over. You're the table captain. We take all these spots. We make them make mistakes. We're still going to outplay him. Ace high flop, he check bolt. Ooh, 14 here. And he has us covered. Now it's a, kind of a unique situation. Um... Not only what you do with your hand, but how are you constructing uh, the range here, but So you can start with the offsuit. Are you still going to be as aggressive with some of the lower offsuit and raise to three with like the 10 fours? Is the 10 four off raise still in there? I that think, kind of stuff. I think overall our range is going to be more passive. Okay. It's in regards to what? What's more passive in that range? The suited hands, what what what, what region is more passive? The all suited hands. Are, suited hands are going to be call. Okay. We're going, have, we're going to have a mix of raises and shoves. Um, the raises are going to come from aces, kings, ace, king, that area. The strong linear portion, easy. Uh, 
and what's going to mix are going to be the lower, like 8584 might mix raise three. Um, shelving is going to be off suit aces, ace nine and below. Um, pairs up to sixes or sevens. And I think this might be in the middle where it checks and raises pretty equally. Maybe checking a little more. I like what you said, and I snap took your word on it. I wasn't going to let you backtrack. Raise sometimes. And it feels so weird here when you can just take a flop and you get raised. Uh, skate or die. Before I click this, do you want to take a guess at the raising range? Are you still using a lot of these offsuits? Are you using any suited hands? Uh, Skitter dot. Oh, there he is. Are you raising any yeah, suited at, hands? At this stack depth, um, I probably want to raise like the better suited hands, like maybe like the more trashy, like maybe like ace five through ace nine, and then like um. Do something with the other ones like ace five through ace nine suited and maybe okay. like the more trashy ace twos through maybe ace eight offsuit it wants to like but um but this hmm no I, I think i'm just gonna limp behind and um uh yeah you realize yeah, the I'm, answer is right here it's telling you, you can raise yeah. sometimes but yeah i get yeah, what yeah, you're saying yeah mostly check oh yeah it's right there yeah yeah um i was cooking sorry no, uh, cool. yeah, listening on my headphones. Yeah, I was just kind of curious uh, how you're interpreting the suited portion because I asked that question because look at this shit. No, 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 no. None. Junkie aces. I missed the Look at you. Who, some, right, we just looked twos at Twos through it. sevens, twos through sixes, twos through sevens, raisings, beautiful. Offsuit aces, yum, yum. Good, perfect. And then we're still in here. 10 4 has been erased. Every spot nine four these this little region has been erased a hundred percent of the time. One thing I've noticed sometimes is that there's a big raise size with like ace nine through the ace ten region, and it raises like the absolute worst with like like seven deuce, three deuce sometimes with and it goes five point five or four point five instead of three. Is there a, a reason behind that or I mean, it's balanced between it doing this as well, just maximizing fold equity, right? I think the EV would be the same between using a uh, standard size. The solver is just going to balance this with some of these as well. So it can get away with using maximum fold equity with some of its junkiest hands. It's also going to use these, which you can also prefer to jam and have a comparable EV in game and stuff, you know? Okay, right. so n none of the suited aces like through A7. Okay. Yeah. Like it's it's I mean you're raising so much junk here like this is really junky as well so it really wants maximum fold equity and it can also get away with just jamming these so it just like balances it. it's it's pretty cool to have this if you're smart enough and good enough to utilize this all the time it's pretty cool but I think if you did simplify the strategy and just go three and also keep some of these stronger ASACs in your three range as well it's good. What's the small blinds limp range, you ask? Here we go. I mean, you are actually getting ran over. Like, this is a lot of jamming, right? It's jamming 30% on you. What's the uh, limp uh, jam? All right. Uh, yeah, the limp. And then we go three. So you want to see versus three, I assume, since that's our yeah. most standard. Yeah. And then here is their jam. So they're ripping. Uh, they don't have the offsuit 8x because, you know, they did something with that at high frequency. Jam these pairs. Interestingly enough, to see the king 6, some of these offsuit king x is kind of crazy. Uh, nobody finds these. Suited 6s are kind of interesting to see in there. Okay. I think yeah, I figured... all the other kings. For. I think so. I think King X is always goes aggressive. Yeah, King X just I'm... ain't folding. Look at this shit, man. Yeah. All right. No, 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 no. King 10 to King 7 is in range. Okay. okay. I thought they majority jammed, but maybe I'm... 
Uh, did you want to see anything else, Andrew, here with this? Uh, no, that was it. Yeah, I figured that they were going to be doing some trapping uh, with their ace X suited and stuff like that. Um, yeah. The intentions of jamming there when they yeah, here's the small rest. barn. Like, it has ace 10, ace 5. It's not a lot. I mean, you know, it has ace king, but let's be honest, in game, I don't think I've ever seen, I'm never really seeing this complete here. I think most people are just raising it or doing something, but it's really nice in these. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. Raise this. Uh, two more hands. Yeah, I have like two more minutes before delivery gets here. All right. Play this. Just do this one. Look at this uh, stack disparity. We have them two to one. Honestly, as a exploit with this stack death, I'm raising just about everything. <laughs> Even the suited region that you're like queen nine suited. Are you still the suited eights, the suited nines, no, the suited the sevens? Middle su the middle suited rate region, I might play logically and just limp those. Okay. But especially 10 5, I'm raising. How about ace deuce and ace three suited? I'm probably raising them. I mean, I'm raising this 100% of the time. Nope. I asked you that because I feel like that falls into this region. The suited, some of the suited nines, eight, sevens, yeah. and stuff like that. Like, I. I'd like to have, well, it's really nice to have some ASEX in there. Honestly, seeing this much, uh, I would fucking, in this kind of spot, I'd probably raise this 100% of the time. Yeah, to me three. too. I mean, it just, it's good to have some in your range uh, when, when flops come and stuff like that. But uh, It's kind of surprising to see this much. But yeah, we're even, look how much harder we're going with this region now. The offsuit deuces are fucking pure. Offsuit threes, offsuit fours. Still uh, toning it back with the uh, all, most of our suited range, right? So it makes a lot of sense. Ace eight suited plus, ace nine off plus. Uh, all right, Joey. Thank you, man. I get, I understand you got to go. Thank you. That was a nice little set. Yeah, I'm I'm still here. I'm just I'm getting a food delivery any minute. What are you getting? What are you eating? Huh? Oh my! Oh. What are you eating? Now we fold. No, what are you, what are, what are you eating for food? Oh, no, did you get no, delivered? it's a supermarket delivery. Oh, you're go, getting groceries. I don't, shop, I don't go shopping. I have it delivered. That's yeah, smart, man. I thought you were getting like eaten out somewhere or something like that. I was like, what is it? All right, uh, it made you auto raise here, and then we get okay. That's interesting. I'm oh no, we raised this and got re raised. We just folded. Right. Last one. Raise three. Offsuit threes, offsuit deuces mixing, offsuit fours. All right. Well done. <laughs> jam done. This is going to happen. What do you jam? Oof. What the hell? Last time was also Jack three. So, like, the threes and deuces region just goes home. I mean, it's interesting that we didn't look at this from the small blind in the money. We didn't do small blind in the money last week. I think we did all ICM, but this is kind of a nasty little limp jam versus raise. And I think we only focused on RFI first in. There's so much blind versus blind. We could do this for two months. <laughs> we can go through a different portion of blind versus blind for months. Here's the small blind range again. Our raise three range. And the small blinds limp call and limp jam range. Pretty savage to see king six pure in the past few iterations we've done this. Uh, these low suited paint. And then uh, obviously if you ever have a suited ace, it's game time. King two and queen two suited unblocks. All the middling card bluffs and is going to run reasonable equity, be 60, 40 and have an over sometime and stuff. So it's good. Not be dominated. Block the nuts. Sweet. Uh, let's go one more person here. Let me see. Andrew, you interested in uh, running a quick five piece? Uh, sure. All right, sweet. Let's do it. Uh, 
Cool. Uh, we are covered here. Uh, we do have one of the worst suited hands. Uh, are you having these low suited hands in your raising range? Any of these? Are you using this? Uh, so it's probably going to be mostly checks, but there might be some portion of raises. Probably okay. at 20% area. I'm uncertain with these. Um, hmm. Wonder if any of our suited hands at 20 are raising at all outside of like the King 10 suited and A7 suited, A8 suited. Do we ever use any of the worst or are all the raises coming from our offsuit deuces, threes, fours, offsuit aces, pairs, and strong linear? Is is because that's been the consistent theme and heuristic that we've seen thus far this session. I would peer check this. Um, and let's see. Look how good at the game we're getting. Now, it does have these in here, but if you don't know, right, it's it's even mixing more check. You could probably just use a straight strategy, and I would make a mistake and raise King 10 suited here. Wow. All right, Ace-8 suited plus. Still raising uh, offsuit deuces, threes, fours, 10-4 still in there, 10-5 still in there. And we are covered here. Okay. Ace-8, Ace-9, Ace-10, Ace-Jack ripping. Yeah, Ace-Queen raising. Woo, tried to trap us. Uh, 35 and Ace-9 off. And look at the size it gives us. This is uh, 3.25 as well, so that's kind of cool to see. Uh, raise. Raising. Um... Which suited ace, uh, offsuit aces are you checking back, if any? Uh, probably the low uh, offsuit aces, so ace two, ace three, uh, the ace five, and some ace six. Okay. Um, and is this at 35? Are we raising five, six, four, five, five, six, seven, eight? Are we mixing those in at all um, at this stack depth? Uh, pairs or suited connectors? Uh, suited connectors. I'm sorry. Suited connectors. Yeah. My bad. Uh, suited connectors. I would. I would actually prefer a smaller raise sizing here than what they're giving us, uh, just to keep SPR high. And Interesting. For, yeah. Uh, just so at least we can see our, you know, recognize the, you know, significant implied odds that those hands have. Right. I wonder if, uh, just staying above 3x in position almost always at 30 big blinds plus is just going to be much more efficient, not give them too good of a price and be able to, um, I, I guess we don't really care about the SPR being large when we're in position and stuff like that, but we want to get value with a lot of our range and raise and get fold equity with some portions. So I don't know if I would ever go 2.5 or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm think I'm always going to be three to three, uh, three to three point five plus, um, in this spot. Never ever go under three x at thirty plus effective ever. Probably not ever in general. Maybe at fifteen bigs, I'm going two point five, two point seven five. But and uh, this is interesting because this one does mix chat quite a bit. I was thinking I would raise more of the ace two, ace three, ace four myself and then check uh six seven eight and then uh nine plus raise so i would raise this a lot i'm kind of surprised to see it yep ace two three four still not much man it's like ace nine oh plus ace ten oh plus and more dog shit got some of these suited hands here as well um i asked about your suited connectors these are in here at 35 plus a lot. All right, Joey's back. Oh my, we have seven bigs here versus a limp. Uh, yikes. Go to uh, Andrew, excuse me. No worries. Uh, so there's no raise here. Um, at least not like the 3.5. Uh, it's either check or all in. Um, yeah. How close are we to the money? <laughs> We're in the money. 25% of the... No. Oh, 
no, 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 no. Twenty five percent is out of the money. This is uh, yeah, right outside the money. Seventeen percent, uh, ten percent is in the money. No, fifteen. Fifteen, and seventeen is money bubble. Yes. That's, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I would actually rip this. Ripping uh, this. Yeah, I wouldn't even want to take a flop with this <laughs> because we're in so much pressure. Uh, once we see a flop, I would just, you know, auto rip this. So if you're auto ripping this, I'm assuming uh, you're ripping all the ace x. Uh, are you going to use all the king x as well? Uh, offsuit. Uh, yeah. Yes. Offsuit and suited, king x. And most some suited too. Actually, most suited too. Um, yeah. I would actually say pocket pairs. Uh, probably mm -hmm. fives or sixes. You know, all the way up to aces. Are probably going to do some min raising um just to try to extract some value out of those hands uh, and i actually change that middling pairs i would probably rip those two all the way up to sevens or eights uh, and then try to extract value from the others yeah and the thing is i don't think we get to min raise even with aces here like it only has 3.5 i think aces could potentially check back at some point and then maybe use 3.5 with some hands but Man, I actually don't know if I would rip this <laughs> versus limp. I actually don't know. I think I just I don't know what to do with this. I probably check like check this and jam offsuit nines. God, I don't know what to do with this. Jam it. You guys are too good at the game. Pucks, we stink. Oh wait. Raise. Yeah. It says raise, not all. That's actually. Okay, so it's all the ace x, king x. Yeah. I thought this was too dog shit because we we're going to use so many ace and king x. God damn it. And queens. Queen six, yeah. I have to say, I've never seen a chart like this. this <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? What we, look, what we ever look at. Yeah, like aces just want to slow play. Yeah, it makes sense. And then here you go. Instead, you know, the best way to extract value there, Aaron, uh, Andrew, is like, Check with the really good stuff. What the hell? We're not jamming these? Yeah, right. Yeah. I am never checking sevens back. Eights, ninths, I'm never checking. I don't care. I don't know they what the benefit of checking see. eights back with seven bigs and a complete. I have no yeah. idea what the benefit is. You only see, have sad times, right? Yeah. I We don't have seven. I've <laughs> I think it's because small blinds range is just so like polo between not so like. Oh my 70. god, that's why. <laughs> they should just never complete, and when they do, it's probably a trap. Yeah, this this you're never gonna have this because your opponent's not gonna do this. This is not Chris Brewer. This is not Chris Brewer here in a small blind. This is not Justin Saliba here trying to trap you. This guy is limping like a bunch of shit they shouldn't be limping. This guy's limping like fucking four or five suited and seven three because he doesn't know what to do. So we have to jam this. That's I don't why care. Every shove is coming from the blockers to the top end. Yeah, to the top end of his traps. That's why. That's why I didn't know what to do with the queen X, but it blocks enough. That's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, and that's the reason why I like it, sort of a min raise with more yeah. more premiums because, you know, they are not going to not call one, you know, more big blind just to see a flop. And if they make a pair, right, you're going to get it stacks in probably on the flop, if not. The yeah, pair. you know what, man, I kind of like that as an exploit. You also are going to be able to have some flops that are so good you can slow play and give them opportunities to bluff on turn or pick up equity to go broke when you're already that shy. So I kind of like it. I didn't like dig it before, but considering what their actual limp range is relative to what the solver limps, it's just dog shit that wants to see a flop. They've completed here because they likely are trapping or they want to see something. So if you have the top end, just go small and keep in all the really bad hands and get more value from it. Exactly. I think that's really good, actually. Uh, Cool. So we were supposed to rip it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Duh. <laughs> Duh, Solberg. This kid. This is the second time when they limp when they weren't supposed to have a rain, limping range. They actually had the nuts. Oh, golly. This is uh these are kind of spots when I'm deep in tournaments, I find that are a little bit difficult to distinguish if I want to raise, if I'm raise folding, if I should be checking this. And then I try to determine the opponent type here as well. So this is these kind of hands are interesting to me. What are you doing here, uh, Andrew? So it's probably going to be a check, take care, Matt. But I think that there's some frequency that there's going to be a raise here. Um, probably like an 80, 20, maybe 70, 30 split between check and raise. Okay. Pox, what are you thinking here? On global. What are you doing on global? Middling at a a sex check back B money says set halves. What are you doing on ACR? Oh my god, there's not enough. I'm raising tree. <laughs> and what's your raising range look like with your offsuit A sex at 25 here? Oh, it's it's gonna be a uh, every A sex. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be raised uh, all the broadways. Uh, all the pockets and the bottom uh, of suit ends too. Okay. I'm checking the the god of suit godders and of suit uh, connectors, and I'll, I'll check uh, to the suit ends. Okay. And look at set hats. Just going straight savage. All asex, all pair. Um. So, uh, obviously, you're mixing a, a lot of the off suit hands. Um, and checking back the off suit connectors. Um, I think this one probably does mix check back a lot. Honestly, I hate to I, hurt, I hate to burst the bubble, but we've seen this consistently where the middling and low a sex check, and then it's like ace nine off, and ace nine is like a 50 50, and ace ten is like seventy, and then the rest are raising. That would be my guess. Up, oh, this one's different. So ace eight boss, ace ten's pure. And all these middling ones check. Ace deuce jamming. Golly. Wow. What the fuck? Deuce is threes. Uh, so setups, we do have some traps. You do want to have some traps here with some of the pockets. Yeah, I see. I mean, it's interesting. I say trap, but we're fucking in the big blind. So we want to like allow them to just have some pairs of... So, um... I hmm. see now the ace three and ace four suited start raising. What well, what's the difference now that we're we have more uh, big ones? Yeah, it's just gonna still make some of its ace x. Um, okay. And if you see here skate, like if it's an unco uncomfortable strategy, and I and I advocate this, like you can mix these kind of hands and just call them a lot, right? Especially if you feel yeah. like your opponent's gonna give you any trouble at all. Like I think it's okay to. Complete these because uh, if they're capable of limp jamming on you, this is going to be a sad region where you're going to have to fold. Small blind, big blind go three. They go all in. GG. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're yep. folding that. And it, and it hurts to fold these. Yes. So I think those are ones that just go ahead. And then ace, ten slots. Is the big blind limp jamming here? Uh, the big blind, uh, the small blind, you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. The okay. small blind, all ends, under pairs, suited king, tens plus, uh, ace ten off plus. And okay. I think this is pretty consistent to what you'll see. Uh, players may use more suited aces here than they should. I know on Iggy, somebody's limp jamming ace seven suited plus in this spot. Maybe all the suited aces that they've actually limped in this spot. If I you've been aggressive enough, they you can get jammed on. Nice. Especially at this stack depth. It sounds crazy to say, but yeah, people are limp jamming a lot of suited aces here, in my opinion. Go ahead, uh, Molten. What's up, buddy? Do we cover? Uh, no, we're covered. Okay, I find it weird that we we, we were raising some suited nines at this um, as some percentage of the time. Yeah, a little bit, right? Yeah, because yeah. I thought those would have been like the clearest tracks, but well, I don't think he has as wide as the limp raising range, but yeah, I don't know. 
And it's like three combos or something like that. Yeah, maybe. and it's not even much. Yeah, okay. And then I think personally myself, I would just always check. I just tend to be comfortable checking these back. The playability and getting limp jammed is the saddest shit in the world. And then we just go ham in the paint with these in our strong linear, right? Yeah, Raise yeah. king queen suited at full frequency. Don't use these. Use these a little bit more, you know. These ranges are just a guide. You have like the flexibility to know, okay, I want to adjust this way. I'm just never going to raise suit it, but I'm going to go harder or less hard with the offsuit stuff and so on and so forth. But that's good to see not raising this. Uh, last hand. We just saw this. Um, all in. Or oh, he passed the test. Yeah, yeah uh, ripping some of uh, the ace deuce. Offsuit uh, was a high frequency jam. It's kind of cool. Yep, it's still here. It's literally the same range. Twos, ace, deuce, ace, nine, ace, ten, pocket eights, pocket sevens. Um, Bro, if somebody jammed ten, three off and I was actually trapping them and it showed him, I would mark them as a green tag, but it's a thing. Sweet. This is ten, three. Yeah, it is 10 3 green tag. Great. Only Savage is jammed in. Yeah, Ben CB and shit like that. Uh, let's do that. Perfect. Uh, guys, I need to try to, I, I have to kill it a little bit earlier than I'd like to. I have to try to rest, considering I got to get my kids, homework, football practice, and stream tonight on four hours of sleep, maybe. Uh, so I'm going to just rest up and uh show back up tonight but yeah um tomorrow um tomorrow next week i'm i'm not sure if i'll be here i'm supposed to be going to cincinnati to play the moneymaker tour main event uh and i may be leaving thursday i'm not sure if it'll be in the morning or in the evening so i may be here for this study group or not i'll let you guys know and keep toe posted if i'm not here we'll make sure the group uh goes on um, but with that being said, did anyone have any final thoughts, questions, anything like that? Nope. Cool. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Uh, yeah, next week when we get back into it, we're going to continue the theme. We're actually going to get in the money. I do think, uh, these ICM type situations where, your money bubble stuff is so important, guys. And I think we learned a lot. I learned a lot in regards to the shape of our range in this spot. So we're going to make less mistakes. We're going to be more aggressive. And we're going to understand that people probably aren't balanced. And we need to figure out ways to exploit them. Are they limping too strong a hands? Or are they limping too weak? And once you figure that out, you're going to be able to eat. So, um yeah, if there's nothing else, uh, thank you guys uh, for the support. I'll be back. I'll be streaming this evening if any, if no one has anything to do. And if you guys enjoy these sessions, please let the PC team know. Uh, we want to continue to do these. And if there's anything I can do to make them better, let me know as well. All right, guys. Take care thank and you. good thank luck, fam. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Peace out. Later. Later.